大家好，我是 Oliver Branch Tao。So you might have heard of aerobic exercise, maybe even cardio exercise, or even low intensity steady state exercise. But what you might not have heard of is zone two training. This is a relatively new concept in the exercise science world. In this video, we're going to explain all about zone two training. What exactly is zone two training? Why do they need a new concept for aerobic type exercise? What is it good for? Why should you care? And how to do it? In Peter Atia's new book, Outlive, he talks about zone two training with Inigo San Milan, who's a professional cyclist coach. And really, they go into the details about what exactly is the five zones of training. One being sitting at rest, whereas five is an all-out sprint. Zone two is something just like a brisk walk that is not super easy, but you can hold a conversation. It's just very, very stressed. Technically speaking, the definition for zone two training in this paradigm is that you should be exercising at the highest intensity possible without accumulating lactate. And so lactate should be less than two millimolars. Okay, and as you recall from our previous conversations about high intensity training, is that when you burn glucose for fuel, the byproduct is lactate. So you want to be clearing the lactate at the same rate as you're accumulating lactate, and so that is like a stable uh, level of lactate in your bloodstream. So how efficient your body clears out lactate is a good indicator of your overall mitochondrial health. Okay, what is zone two training really good for? It's really for mitochondrial health. Mitochondria, as you may know, is the power plant of the cell. It produces energy, and it is actually the only place for your body to actually burn. Fatty acids, your fat cells. So the better you are at burning fat means the more mitochondria you have to burn that fat, and this is also known as metabolically fit. Unfit people, however, will have higher levels of lactate at rest, and that's because their mitochondria is not efficient at clearing out the lactate. And so what you'll find is that they'll have to work much harder just to produce baseline energy levels. This also means that they're going to be relying totally on glucose for energy, and they're not going to be burning any fat. So zone two training has shown to encourage mitochondrial biogenesis and mitophagy. Mitophagy, as you may sound similar to autophagy, is when you clear out the dead or weakened cells in with the new cells. And so mitophagy would be the same for mitochondria. Zone two training has also shown to be really good for preventing chronic disease, such as cardiovascular disease, cancer, and even type two diabetes. Zone two training is also associated with a higher VO2 max. And as you've noticed from our last videos on VO2 max, it's also associated with a longer life, longer longevity. As well, it's also really good for increasing the base of all endurance activities. So those are all the reasons why you should be doing zone two training. Now, how do you actually go about doing it? So there's many ways, and here are some simple protocols. The first one is doing three times a week of one-hour sessions, or you can break it down to 45-minute sessions, but four times a week. And you really want to just be going slow and steady. Again, conversational pace, but it should be stressed. That it shouldn't be too easy.、Um, and also, you should be targeting around 70 to 85 percent of your maximum heart rate. And this maximum heart rate is not based on the calculation of 220 minus your age. It should be actually your hardest performance, measuring that actual heart maximum heart rate, and that's what the percentages should be based off. Now, just a couple of notes for you: Zone two training results or output is really variable from person to person, depending on their fitness level. But just to give you a couple of guidelines, and when you're doing a treadmill work or a cycling, and it has a computer screen that shows you the wattage of all the Power that you've outputted in the session, you should take that number and divide it by your total number of kilograms. So that'll give you watts per kilogram. Two watts per kilogram is someone who's reasonably fit. Three watts per kilogram is someone who's very fit, and four watts and more is some is a, basically a professional cyclist. So if you do decide to start doing zone two training, please leave any questions and comments down below, as I'm really curious to know how you do. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below, and I'll see you next time.